Welcome. Today I would like to present an introduction to the lamp lighter from Artifact Electronics. The lamp lighter is an 8-channel signal visualizer or octal digital voltmeter. It is made for Eurorack modular synthesizers and is 16 HP in width. It has a maximum range of plus minus 8 volts. Here you can see the lamp lighter in full action with 8 different signals displayed. I'll walk you through what each of these signals are and how the lamp lighter is configured to display them. I would like to point out that the LEDs are showing up in a bright red color due to lighting limitations. The actual LED color is in fact medium red. So first let's remove all of the inputs and uh, put the uh, device back into a known state. The best way to put it back in a known state is to select the default program. The lamp lighter can store 16 different programs or configurations for later recall. So we'll go into programs and uh, select default. What that does is it loads a standard set of parameters from which you can start to make your own uh, programs. What it means is that each channel is set up for bipolar operation with a 5 volt range and uh, showing a bar graph and using the input, the natural input that is right underneath each of the graphs. To get started let's do some very simple voltmeter action in that we input a positive and a negative voltage from an adjustable voltage source and it acts just as we expect it to uh, but that's not very exciting so let's continue on and put some uh, dynamically changing signals in here let's start out with an LFO input an LFO triangular wave running at a slow frequency and uh, the lamp lighter is made for slow frequencies. It's not, it's not meant to be an audio level display, but rather a uh, visualizer for modulating signals. It will function correctly up to about 400 hertz, after which you may uh, experience some artifacting. Artifacting, get it? Uh, but its purpose is not to go beyond those frequencies, but rather being at low frequencies that can be followed easily by the eye. So now we're looking at the LFO output, and what we'll do next is, for its neighbor, we will plug in the uh, square wave output coming from the exact same LFO. And uh, at this point, we can see uh, f half wave rectification uh, of the uh, triangle wave being shown on channel 2. Next we will put in a random signal and um, that's all over the place but uh, one thing we may notice is that a uh, bar graph may not be the best way to display this so let's go ahead and switch this to a dot graph going into the menu settings uh, here are the settings that are available for each channel. The first thing we need to do is select the channel that we want to change settings for, which we can see by the LED uh, blinking on the lowest row. So now we're changing things for channel 7, which has the uh, random signal uh, fed into it. We then go and select the uh, type of graph which is right now depicted as a dot as a bar graph but we can easily change that uh, to the dot graph by hitting the value button we hit menu again to get to the main display and now we can see the random signal uh, being displayed a little bit more appropriately uh, as a single dot uh, uh, for our next signal let us uh, display 
the output of a trapezoid envelope generator and we will use channel 8 for that and that of course acts uh, just as expected again uh, in that we can clearly visualize what this looks like and uh, imagine what it would sound like or vice versa listen to the sound and then put in this display which would make it easier for us to correspond the output of the modulation source the trapezoid generator to the actual modulation taking place and affecting the sound for the last four uh, for the last four unused inputs i will use the output of a complex envelope generator that outputs four envelopes chained to each other, i.e. each one being triggered by the previous one reaching a certain decay level. We'll start with the first stage of the envelope generator, followed by the second stage, the third, and the fourth. So now we have all of the channels busy, but one thing we can probably notice right off the bat is that the last four inputs I used are all, uh, uh, are all positive only, and we're wasting half of the display on each one of them. So let's take these uh, four channels and change the display or the graph type, no, I mean the range, no, I mean the polarity to positive. Again, we go into Settings. Using the Option key, we select the channel that we want to change a setting for. And the first channel of the envelope generator goes into Channel 3. Our range is 5 volts, and we'll leave it at that. But just to demonstrate is the range will, if you hit the right button, of course, the range will cycle through all the way up to 8 go down to zero, which turns that channel off completely, and then go back up in one volt increments. We'll leave that one at five. Go to the next selection, which is the polarity selection. This one offers bipolar, as shown, positive only, negative only, back to bipolar, but we'll make this one positive. And so now, on channel three, we can see that it is using the entire scale to show a signal that is a positive 5 volt signal. To make things correct, or uh, consistent I should say, we'll go back into settings and apply that same setting to the other three channels that are being fed by the uh, remaining stages of the envelope generator. And uh, so let's select channel 4, uh, change the polarity to plus, next channel, and again uh, the uh, next channel. So now we can see that the outputs of all of the uh, uh, envelope stages are using full deflection on the entire uh, on the entire display. Uh, this pretty much shows operation. Another option that is available to us is that uh, we can clone outputs uh, in that we can use one output, I mean one input, to drive more than one meter at the same time. And this can be used to fatten up a display, make it wider, if you don't need as much information on the screen as you're seeing right now. For example, let's unplug this one and uh, duplicate what is being shown on channel 1, also on channel 2. The way to do that is, again, to go into the settings, select channel 2, but this time going to the input, which right now shows an equal sign, which means that the input is the natural input right underneath each respective channel, but we will change this using the value button to 1. So now we can see that it exactly duplicates what channel 1 is doing. We can now go back in here and change the range of the uh, of channel 2 
to see the effects of uh, first raising it to 8 volts, which should show much less deflection on channel 2 than channel 1, which it does in fact. And of course we can do the opposite by going in and changing the range to 1 volt, which is going to make it uh, top out very quickly. And the last option is to go into the range and change the range to zero, which turns that channel off entirely. All of these settings are available individually for each of the eight channels, and they can be saved uh, for later recall. So let's save this one really quickly, uh, because, uh, well, let's go back into the menu and restore channel 2 to respond to its own signal, which was the square wave output of the LFO. So all we need to do here is turn the value back to 5 and go back out. Oh, and of course go back in and change the input to read the equal sign, which basically means use the natural input, and we're back to the way we were before we made that modification. Now we can put back the channel we unplugged a little while ago and say, OK, we would like to change the setup for later on. And uh, what we'll do is we will go we will go to the program settings. And it's still pointing at the last uh, uh, setting uh, at the last menu item we used under programs, but using the select button we can now go to the save screen. The save screen allows you to save any location from 0 through F, and uh, you'll notice that uh, these two LEDs alternating up there, and what that's telling you is that the program that we just edited that's in the edit buffer is different from what is stored at memory location 1. So in order to save it, we hit the button, the S blinks, uh, basically asking us, are you sure? If we are sure, we hit the option button again, and it will save that for later recall. We can go back in there and have a look at the program, and uh, see that now, on location 1, the lights are on steady, which means that the program got saved, and that basically that also doubles as a compare function, because if we now step through the other locations, uh, we can see the light blinking. Now you may have noticed that on location 2, the light was not blinking. On, on location 1, which we just saved, but location 2, it's not blinking either. And that's because previous to this video, I saved the same setup into 2, but this just told me that we already have it saved in location number 2. I hope this gives you a pretty good idea of what the uh, uh, lamp lighter can do for your modular setup. The last thing I'd like to show you is a bit of eye candy uh, for when you no longer want to look at outputs, but you'd rather look at some visual uh, entertainment. What the visual candy will do for you is it'll show you some non-interactive old-time vintage video game demos, and maybe, uh, you know, maybe you can use that to uh, take a break from what you've been doing and uh, enjoy the show. So we go to uh, Utilities, Eye Candy, and hit this, and uh, you will now get a display you will now get an, a hopefully entertaining display to make everything look exciting. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I will uh, see you at the next video.